Up next, we have Randolph Williams. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure, that our light, not our darkness, that scares us. That's a quote from Williamson. I was born in 1966 in Harlem. Harlem was a totally different place back then. It was engulfed with drugs, prostitution, pimps, gangsters, cops busting heads, lots of violence in the streets. Every morning I would go to school, there would be a, a line wrapped around the corner of my school. I asked my mom, Mom, why, you know, what's all these people doing here? My mom told me they're getting their morning fix. Their morning fix was heroin. My neighborhood was their candy store. My first memory as a child was my dad choking and beating my mother. My dad was an alcoholic and my mother was an addict. I had no brothers and sisters. My dad would come home completely drunk every night and accuse my mother of cheating. One thing always led to another in our household, and it was always violence. I had to become invisible to both parents. At this time, I was being abused also. I was being beat with extension cords, shoes, broom handles, and smacked in the face a lot. I learned at a young age the art of survival. One day, my mother beat me so long and so hard, I felt like something broke inside of me. It was my spirit as a child. I was never the same again. All I felt on a daily basis was rage and anger and hurt. I used to look at my mother and father and wonder, are these my real parents? Is this my real mother and father? Nevertheless, I got to survive. I always look for opportunities to defy my parents because they fucking hurt me and I'm going to fucking hurt them back. The first time I saw somebody get killed, shot dead, I was six years old. My dad told me, shut the fuck up, don't say nothing. And in my house, we always, I had to do exactly what was told. So as I stood there watching the man die, the guy that shot him was standing right over there in the crowd. He didn't even bother to leave. Later that year, my dad was driving me to school in this blue Ford, my mother sitting in the front seat. I was sitting in the back seat and I could smell my dad uh, smearing off. I could smell the old spice that he used to put on in the morning. And I was sitting in the back seat of the car on my way to school. My dad was screaming at my mother, you fucking bitch, you fucking whore, get the fuck out the car. And he throws my mother out of a moving car. I'm screaming, dad, stop the car. Dad, stop the car. Dad, stop the car. He presses on the brakes, stops the car. My mother gets up out of moving traffic, gets back in the car. Two blocks later, my dad drops me off at school. He said, get out. I'm standing there in front of my school trying to catch my breath. If only I could breathe, I could make it trying to catch my breath. The nuns tell me to go into the school. I go into school, I realize if I keep quiet and stay to myself, I'll be all right. So I sit at my desk. Sister Ann at this time says, hey, Randolph, 
stand up and recite your homework. Little did they know what I'd just been through. I stood up and I couldn't do it. And she says, oh, Randolph, you didn't do your homework. Follow me to the coat room. I followed Sister Ann to the coat room. She pulled my pants down, put me over her lap, and began to beat me. At this time, I was immune to pain. I didn't cry, so she thought she wasn't making her point. So she beat me longer and harder. I just took it. I pulled my pants up, walked out of the coat room, and all the kids were laughing. I just took it. I didn't say anything, I was a kid. What the fuck, I'm just a kid. I always knew I was a violent person. So when I got to high school, I joined the football team. I didn't give a fuck if we won or lost. I just wanted to crack someone in their head. Hurt people, hurt people. Also, I had the next, the next bright idea, I would join the Marine Corps. During this time in the Marine Corps, when I wore that uniform, I felt like a savage. I used to wonder to myself, who was worse, me, the savage, or the Marine? Nevertheless, we worked good together. During my whole time I was in the Marine Corps, I was homicidal and suicidal. Nobody ever knew. When I got out of the Marine Corps, I went home back to the South Bronx. At this time, me and my friends were hanging out on the corner one day, and we used to have a game we used to play. In New York City, we were really straightforward by the way we spoke to people. We didn't speak with censored conversation. We were just very raw about how we spoke. So we used to play this game amongst my friends. The game was, we would snap on each other. Whoever would get angry would make us all happy if you got angry. So as they were snapping on each other, I was standing there motionless, empty. My friend Ski Loon looked at me and said, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? You look like a fucking murderer. You look like fucking Hannibal Lecter. What the fuck is wrong with you? And I just stood there, look, stood there looking at him, empty. I was suffering from PTSD and I really didn't know it. I realized something was wrong with me, so I decided to travel the world. While I was traveling, I was just trying to find my soul, trying to find some peace. I ended up in Miami. One day I was walking around the hood. I felt very comfortable in the hood. Besides, I grew up in the hood. I always walked around with two to three thousand dollars in my pocket. I always had the concept of thought, I'll either buy it or I'll take it from you. And that made me feel good. So one day I was walking around the hood in Miami and I seen these people in front of a church. And I asked them, what are you doing there? They told me we were waiting for some food. Me being from the hood, I figured I'll just blend in with the homeless and get a free meal with two to three thousand dollars in my pocket. <laughs> and I did just that, you know, so I'm blending in with the homeless. And uh, the guy said, before you go, you have to go to church. Me, I went to Catholic school all my life. So to me, you know, I go to church before I eat a meal. So I'm sitting in the Catholic church, sitting around a group of men that are really broken and homeless. Me, I'm just there for a free meal. They started to preach and something happened. The preacher was looking directly at me and something happened. I started crying uncontrollably. All the pain that I've ever felt from my mother, my father, 
from my teachers, from the kids, from the Marine Corps. All the pain that I ever felt was coming out. Uncontrollably, I was crying. I was broken. All the men that were around me was looking at me, wondering what was wrong with me. One of them said, we're going to eat. It's going to be all right, brother. <laughs> yeah, I had two, three grand in my pocket, and I was broken. When I left that church, I wasn't the same person as I was when I came in. I have learned to love myself and others. That lesson took me a long time because love was beat out of me as a child. I've made new friends. My new friends are forgiveness and grace. Today I'm free. I've been in an emotional jail for many years. It feels so good to be free. You know who freed me? Love. Love, grace, and mercy freed me. Now I can breathe. Thank you, love, grace, and mercy for my freedom. That was Randolph Williams.